I want us to look on something like setting project goals, setting project goals, objectives and activities. If I go back to the background where we were, if I go back to where we have started from, you and me, we discussed on project design. We discussed on project design. And as we are discussing on project design, we started designing our project. And in this designing our project, we look at situation analysis. And in the situation analysis, you describe the situation. You looked at the area characteristics, you looked at the population characteristics, you looked at the current services available, you looked at the current services available, and then you ended with the needs of the community. So in doing the needs of the society, you came to the second stage, and the second stage was, now what is the problem? You identify the problem, you prioritize the problem. And for this, you came and use what we call pair wise ranking matrix. And in this tool, you picked these needs. That's what you came and paired. The needs that you identified in the situation analysis. And when you did the pairs ranking matrix, you came up with a priority problem. And this priority problem made everything ready for us to move on. That this is the priority and you have now a priority. So you realize in the Paris Ranking Matrix you came up with a priority. Now, this priority problem, you came to problem three analysis. And in problem three analysis, you identify the consequences of the problem and you also identify the causes of the problem. And you finish the assignment, part of the assignment, you finish by looking at statement of the problem. Statement of the problem. And in the statement of the problem, we asked you, what is the problem? We asked a very simple question, what is the problem? Of which the problem you have already identified as the priority problem here. So you just state it. And then we also asked you, what is the size of the problem? size of the problem. So as you understood the size of the problem, you either told us that it is majority of the people, few of the people, many of the youths, you, you used, or you used figures, you used percentage. And then you came and asked you, what are the causes? What are the possible causes of the problem? Which you already found them from here. We ask you also what are the consequences, which is already the problem key. And then you end up with what? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So it is a question. So all this, we say you can all do all this. This was a paragraph that we needed. And this was a matrix that we needed from you. And this was a problem tree that we had from you according to the session. And then you have to finish with the statement of the problem. So up to now, you already know what is your problem. You already know what are the consequences, what are the causes. You already know the problem. You have stated the problem. Now, this leads us to now what we call, how therefore, from here, how do we 
designed this problem in terms of getting its goals, objectives, and activities. Getting its goals, objectives, and activities up to where we are. And this takes us to the topic of today. This gives us the topic of today that we are saying for us to set a project goal, for us to set a pro setting a project goal, that a project goal may be refined as if you look at the word goal, we can define a goal as a statement of overall intention of conducting a project. A statement of overall intention of conducting a project. Statement of overall intention of conducting a project. Case here, I can tell you that I want to go to Kampala. The fact that I want to go to Kampala, it is an overall statement. It is just a general statement indicating what I want to do. So as we look at this, we are saying a statement of overall intention of conducting a project. I want to go to Kampala. Simple like that. To go to Kampala, to go and have food, to go and eat, to go to class. Now we are agreeing to set a project goal to set a project goal, one must be able to answer the following questions. For you to set a project goal, you must answer the following questions. One, the question must look at what are we possible to have as the overall end result of the project. So for you to set the goal, you must have understood the overall end result of the project, the overall end result of the project. What are you going to do? Where are you going to? I'm going to Kampala. Overall end result, I must reach Kampala. Where, number two question, why do we need to implement this project? Why do we need to implement this project? Why do we need it? Is there a reason why should you go to Kampala? Why should you come to class? Why should you get a degree? So all these are statements of overall intention, indicating what you want to do. And lastly, the question you need to ask yourself, who is the overall beneficiary? Who is going to benefit from this project? Overall beneficiary or target population? Who are these people going to benefit from this project? So this gives us a leeway that we need to move on and we set our project goals. Now, for us, before we set these other project goals, people have got different names. Other names of a project goal. Some books have it as the aim. Some books have it as the aim. Some books have it as purpose. Some people refer it as general objective. And some people will refer it as overall objective. As you study some of the courses that you have in Bukema University, like in research, you use the idea of general objective or overall objective. All of us are revealing and are, all of us are talking about what? The goal. So other names of a goal that you have in different books that you have, it is either an aim, a purpose, or a general objective or overall objective. Now, the major question we have here is today, how does a project goal comes about? How does a project goal comes about? How does a project goal comes about? So looking at this, we ask a simple question. How does a project goal comes about? How do you come up with this project goal? Now, this seems to be very hard, but it's a very simple thing. Now we say we only set a project goal after selecting the priority problem. You can only have come up with a project goal after selecting a priority problem. 
of which, as we have done this, we came up with a situation analysis. The situation analysis gave us a list of problems. List of problems. This is what we got in the situation analysis. Now we took the list of problems in the situation analysis to pairwise ranking matrix. And what did we do? We, we prioritized. We prioritized our problem. Now, from prioritizing this problem, we are saying it is only after this prioritizing this problem that it can come about with a project goal. And in this, we only do this after selecting the priority problem area of our intervention. With this, we have gone further and known this is the problem, we have known the problem, we have known the population, we have known the area, and we have known the size of the problem, and we have known what we want to achieve when we state our project problem statement. And this gives us that for us to understand this, we need to understand the characteristics of a goal. What are some of the characteristics of a goal that we need to understand as we go on and form our goals and objectives here? What are some of the characteristics of a goal? Characteristics of a goal. We are saying, as we look at the characteristics Oh, a goal. One, we are seeing it is one broad statement summarizing what you want to do. It is one broad statement summarizing what you want to do. I want to go to Kampala. It is very broad. You cannot measure it, you can do nothing. It has the word two, number two characteristics. It has the word two. What does it do? Indicating that you want to do something. Indicating that you want to do something. These are the importance of a goal, the characters of a goal. Number three, we are saying it talks about impact on a given population. A goal talks about it talks about impact. It talks about impact on a given population. That's a goal. It talks about impact on a given population. We also say a goal is difficult to measure directly because its effects are general. Another characteristic is it is difficult to measure. A goal is very difficult to measure directly because its impact It is one broad statement summarizing what you want to do. I want to go to Kampala. I'm going to class. Somebody can not know what you are going to do. I'm going to class. What are you going to do in class? You might be going for revision. You might be going for to attend a lecture. You might just be going to meet someone. Somebody cannot say what you are going to do. We are saying it has the word to indicating you want to do something. Where are you going? I want to go to indicating the something that you are going to do. Number three, we are saying it talks about impact on a given population. I am going to class. I am having a lecture. Today when I was living home, I said, I am going for a lecture. Which lecture? 
Nobody knows. What I'm going to teach, nobody knows because you're talking about a goal. I have a lecture. Which topic, I'm going to know. What I'm going to do, I'm going to understand. What am I going to lecture? I'm going to understand. Where am I going to stand from? I'm going to understand. Which method of lecturing? I'm going to understand. Reason is, my goal was to go and have a lecture. So you realize its impact is on a given population. It is not on the taxi, it is not on the on anybody, but it is on my online students. And last thing you're saying, it is difficult to measure directly because its effects are what? Are general. I am having a lecture. When I was looking home, I said, excuse me, I'm having a lecture from 7, but we're going to start around 7.15 because students have to come in and sit. And that is how we move. So nobody can maneuver. Reason is because you have an overall statement, an overall intention. So for an example, what problem did you have? You remember in that problem that you have submitted to me, I'm going to look at the assignments and I'm going to commit back. Now, when you look at that assignment, you gave me the situation analysis. After situation analysis, you went pairwise ranking matrix. And in that pairwise ranking matrix, you prioritized one problem. The main problem, and when you prioritize this problem, you came to problem tree analysis, and in the problem tree analysis, you understood the consequences and the effect, the causes down there. Now, after understanding all this, you came and wrote the problem statement. You told us this is the problem, and this problem it has this is the size, and because of this, it has been caused by this, and these causes, if they are not dealt with, the consequences is this. Now, this project, or this project, what do you want to do? I want to stop the spread of COVID, to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Arua campus, to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bali campus, to, to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Kampala campus. So you realize it is a general statement. How you are going to prevent, nobody knows. How you are going to meet these mitigations of COVID-19, nobody knows. Simply because you have a general statement to prevent the spread of COVID-19, to prevent the spread of HIV AIDS in Bugema University main campus, to prevent the spread of what? Of COVID-19 around us. Now, and you look at this, the general statement when you have not indicated, how you have not indicated, which means you are going to use, you have not indicated, but you realize you have communicated to someone that at the end of the day, we are preventing the spread of what? COVID-19 in Bugema University and Kapala and Arua campus. Now this leads us to, after we have understood the characteristics, now, question is, what are the components of our project goal? What are the components? Oh, a project goal. Just like any other thing, even goals have got a, a, a component. Now we are saying the goals are divided, the goal has got two main components. The goal has got two main components. Number one, a part that summarizes what is going to be done. Number one is part that summarizes what is going to be done. And number two, component of a project goal, we are saying the part that summarizes the overall impact of the project. Part that summarizes part that summarizes the overall impact of the project. So when I look at this, I can have my goal. I can have my, my project goal. And with this, we can agree and look at all these things. We have looked, we have said that a project has got characteristics, we have said a project has got, a project goal has got characteristics, it has got what we also call its component. For an example, let's say our project goal can be, example I'm 
giving you the goal while we are studying online in Bukema University is to prevent to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. You can add your campus, but I want to be general. That's why we have gone online, to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. Now, if you look at this, let's look at this. The statement to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. Let's, let's mark ourselves by looking at the characteristics that it has. Look at this. Can you see all the characteristics that it has? If you look at what we have, can you identify the characteristics? Number one, I'm saying it is one broad statement that summarizes what we're going to do to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. So to me, my goal meets characteristic number one. I'm okay. It is one broad statement summarizing what we want to do to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. It is one broad statement. No comma, no nothing. It is one broad statement to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. Number two, it has the word two indicating we want to do something. There we are. I've met my second characteristics. It has the word two indicating that we want to do something. Number three, we are saying it has, it talks about impact on a given population to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Where? In Bugema University. And that's why I'm saying, put your campus, whether you put Arua, whether you put Main Campus, whether you put Kampala Campus, whether you put Bali, all of us are in that population. So our population area is what? Bugema University. And lastly, we are saying it is difficult to measure. Very difficult to measure. Look at this. You will never measure this. How we are going to prevent the spread of COVID-19. You don't know. You don't know. You cannot measure it. It is very difficult to measure. Because its effects are what? are still general in this. Now you look at this, it gives me that. Now, I want to continue that I've met the, to me, I've met with this, I've met the characteristics of a goal. Now, I want to look at one part and the part I'm looking at is the components of a goal. We are saying it has got two components and the first part of the component is the part that summarizes what is going to be done? What are we going to do? To do, we are going to prevent. This is part one. To prevent. The part that summarizes what is going to be done. What are you going to do? We are going to prevent. So this gives me that my goal has, got, has met the component number one. Number two, the part that summarizes the overall impact of the project. What are you going to do? The first part is to prevent. The second part is the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. So this makes my part two of the goal. And it makes me understand that my goal is very simple, very one broad statement. It has the word two. It is on an impact and it is difficult to measure. But at the same time, it meets the requirements of a project, components of a project goal. Part of it has got the part that summarizes what is going to be done, and part of it has got the part that summarizes what, what the part that summarizes the overall impact of the project. That we are not only going to spread HIV AIDS, we are not, no, we are not only going to prevent the spread of HIV AIDS, but in this component, component number one, we say that we are going to prevent. How? We are going to understand how to prevent it. And lastly, we are talking about the part that summarizes the part that summarizes the overall impact of the project. We are not going to prevent malaria. We are not going to prevent HIV AIDS. We are not going to prevent anything, accidents. We are going to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And it is where? In Bugema University. So as we write our goal and as we write our objectives and activities next, we are going to be controlled that the way Bukema University is controlling its COVID-19 
COVID-19. It's not the same way Makerere, UCU, Nej, Nkozi is controlling the spread of COVID-19. The way Bukema University is preventing the spread of COVID-19 in Mbale is different to what we are doing in Kampala and is different to what we are doing in Kasese and is different to what we are doing in main campus. For an example, in Arua campus, students are studying on blended learning. Main campus, some of them are in blended, those who are busy or those who are not here, those who are in service. But some of them are here on face to face. But we are saying maintain your mask, maintain social distance. Now you look at all of us, we are in Geva University, but the strategy Mali is producing, uh, uh, using the strategy Kasese is using, the strategy Arua is using, Kampala campus is using, are all different because all of us are preventing, yes. But how the part that summarizes the overall impact of the project is totally different. So in the way you prepare, online studies, blended learning, face-to-face, -face, social distance, and all of us are preventing the spread of COVID-19. Up to that, allow me to go and mix that for us to understand the goal, for us to put the goal in order, and for us to be able to measure the project goal, we have to understand what we call the project objectives. Because the goal is one broad statement summarizing what you want to do, one. And because the goal is very hard or difficult to measure, two. And because the goal is one, it is just a statement of an overall intention. Now, for us to understand the goal, we need to understand what to call Project Objectives. Now, question is, what is an objective? A goal, we say, a goal is a statement of overall intention of conducting what? A project. Now, what is an objective? We can say an objective is a specific statement. An objective is a specific statement. Statement. It is a specific statement that describes the intention. That describes the intention. A specific statement that describes the intention of the different implementation parts of a project. Or the different implementation parts parts of a project. Go back to me on our goal that we are. Go back to me on our goal that we are. We say a goal must have two components. One is the part that talks about what we are going to do. The part that summarizes what is going to be done. And number two, the part that summarizes the overall impact of the project. Now we are saying, what is an objective? An objective is a specific statement that describes the intention of different implementation parts. The intention of different implementation parts of a project. So you just go back to your goal. The goal has got two components. It has got part one that summarizes the overall impact, the overall what we are going to do, summarizes what we are going to do. And number two, the part that summarizes the overall impact of the project. So the goal, the objective comes and says that I am an objective. Why? Because I try to explain to you, to describe for you the intention of different parts of an implementation project. Let's look at this. Number one part of the goal is to prevent. Number one part of the goal is to prevent. Number two part of the goal is the spread of COVID-19 in BU. Now, what is your intention? What is your intention? The fact that you come and tell us how you want to prevent the spread of COVID-19. 
how you want to prevent this spread of COVID-19, then this forms our objectives. Because we are saying an objective is a specific statement that is the intention of different parts, different implementation parts of a project. And that different implementation parts of a project, we can easily get it from a goal. And we are saying a goal has got two components. Now, question is, why do we need? Question is, why do we need? Question is, why do we need to set project objectives? Why do you need project objectives? Why set project objectives? Why do we set the project objectives? Reason is, very simple reason, we set a project objective because the goal is too broad and cannot tell us the different parts of the project. Simply because the goal is too broad and being that it is too broad, it cannot tell us the different implementation parts. Just as you look at what we have, we are talking about to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. That's our goal, to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. Question is, how are you going to prevent the spread of COVID-19? If somebody comes and asks you, how is Bugema preventing the spread of COVID-19? You, you are staying in Bugema, you might forge answers. But imagine you want to tell a donor that you're going to, spread the, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. How? The donor will ask you, explain to me how you are going to prevent the spread of COVID-19. So in using that, we use objective. And objective are words to do. They contain words to do. Objectives are about action. They contain a word showing that we are going to do something. And this gives me that even objectives have got their characteristics. Even objectives have got their characteristics. Characteristics of objective. And this can be acronymed. This has been acronymed as SMART. Many people know this, SMART. And they say an objective must be one specific. It must be one specific. Two, it must be measurable. Three, it must be attainable. or achievable. Four, it must be realistic. And number five, they say it must be time bound. And this is what we started with. If you remember when we talked about the definition of a project, we say that it is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or service. And we looked at it and said that one of the parameters, one of the elements of a project, that it has got the element of what? Time. And when we came further, we said that the element, if you look at the objectives of a project, number one of them is what? Time or lifespan. And this brings us that even in a project, when I talk about an objective, an objective now that is what is going to tell us what is so specific about the project, therefore, it has to consider time bound. John Chikati, in his book, Writing Proposals, and writing, uh, in writing proposals, in his book, Writing Proposals, he says that for a good objective, a good objective must not only be smart, but he continues and says that it is smarter. And the E, he puts that at the time on, you must be able to evaluate. That as you look at that objective, does it meet the requirements of what you want to achieve? If you talk about to purchase, like now we remember university, we say one of the ways to prevent the spread of COVID-19 is to decongest classrooms. Like when I was in Kampala campus, in all our classrooms, we reduced the seats to 20-20 in a classroom. From 40 
some of them were 60, we made sure that every class was only having 20 seats. And that we, we were talking about to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Number two, in Kampala campus, we closed all the gates. We remained with only one gate of entrance. And in that gate of entrance, you must come with a mask, number one. Number two, you must get in and sign on the book. And your temperature must be checked. We also went further and bought washing washing what? The, 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 the containers with sanitizer, and washing and sanitizer and everything. And all this we bought them. We are thinking of preventing. Now if you look at the idea of idea of closing all the gates and having one entry. If you evaluate it, does it give you the, a, a, a way or does it give you a promise that we are preventing the spread of COVID-19? Arua campus, a bit Arua campus, just imagine the gate from the church is closed. You are only using the main gate from the road this side. Now, the ne one next to golf course, opposite the golf course. Now, that is the gate we are using. Arua campus has got almost like three gates, but all of them are closed. They are only using one gate. This is the gate of entrance, and this is the gate of exit. Now, the question is, if you look at that strategy of closing all the gates and having one gate, do you think it helped you to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Yes. Now, another question Chikati brings, that after evaluating an objective, re-evaluate it again. That is one objective you have evaluated. Closing all the gates and using one gate as the entrance as, and as the exit. That is the strategy we used in Kampala campus, that is the strategy Arua campus also used. Now, come back, that is only one strategy to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Another strategy to prevent the, COVID of COVID, the spread of COVID-19 is to make sure that you are scanned and checked at the gate. You are scanned in temperature, you are checked, and you are put everything, your temperature is okay, that's when you can be allowed to enter into the campus. When you have sanitized, one, with your mask, full mask, two. And we had security men, like the main campus, we had security men who had been put into place just to move around campus. If they find you without mask, they stop you, they always order you to get out of campus, number one, or to put on your mask, and it was full mask. Now this was done so that, now look at this. I've looked at only two strategies that we have had. We have only looked at two strategies that we have had. And these two strategies gives us a way that what Bugema is using to prevent the spread of COVID-19. So number one, we are talking about closing all the gates and using one gate. Number two, we are talking about making sure that when you enter your temperature and everything is looked at. Now, John Chikati, in his book, he says that apart from the five characteristics of an objective, smart, he also brings the idea that an objective must be smarter. That apart from me looking at the time bound, apart from me looking at the, 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 the realisticness, attainable, achievability, measurability, and specificity, now he goes further and says that, can you evaluate? And after evaluating, the first one was close the gate. The second one was put on mask. Combine all of them again and re-evaluate. Do they help you to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Do they? Like now what we have here is we have blended learning. To prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University, we have blended learning or online, what we don't want. Number two, using one gate as the entrance and as the exit. Number three, putting on masks. Those are the strategies Bugema has used. Chikati is saying, evaluate this one alone, number one. Blended learning, does it help us to stop the spread, to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University? We need to evaluate. Number two, using one entry gate in Arua in Kampala. 
does it help us prevent the spread of COVID-19 and in Mali? Number three, putting on masks, checking on their temperature. Does it help us to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Now, after you evaluate all of them each, John Chikati in his book is saying, come back and compare all of them again, blended learning, using one gate as entrance and exit. And number three, putting on masks. Do all these strategies Bugema has put in the name of preventing the spread of COVID-19 help Bugema prevent the COVID-19 in Bugema? So with all these, when we come and find that Ronnie is COVID-19 positive, then we question the strategies. That's why we are re-evaluating ourselves. We question the strategies. Are these strategies, are they time-bound? Are they realistic? Are they achievable? So you realize when this comes in, we have an understanding with John Chikati that he says that though an objective must be, though an objective must be smarter, though an objective must be smart, but he also say that it is better if we make it smarter. Because when we make it smarter, we can evaluate our objectives and we can re-evaluate our studies. Now this gives me the idea that how do we set the project objectives? I've been talking about it here. How do we set project objectives? That we divide the goal into implementation parts, what I've done there. We know the goal has got two parts. The, 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 the goal has got two components. The part that summarizes what is going to be done and the part that summarizes the overall impact of the goal. The, the goal. Now, we are of the project. We are saying we divide the goal into implementation parts that some of them from each other but are related to the overall goal. We then state our intention for each part. That's what I did here. I divided it to prevent what are our intentions to prevent? That's what I was trying to bring here, but not in full. We, our first strategy is, our intention is blended learning. Our intention is one gate for exit and exit. Our intention is putting on masks, encouraging every person to put on a mask and use sanitizer. Now, those makes our work easier. However small a project is, it, is, it has two or more parts. We need to use some brain work to be able to discover these parts. Recognizing the different implementation parts of the project is the most important part in making objectives. Recognizing the different parts of the implementation project. Recognizing the different implementation parts of the project is the most important part in making the objectives. If you understand your goal, and then you understand the components of a goal and you can separate them, then you are able to make a project objective. Because when you understand the different parts and then you come and state your intention of each part, then you become specific. What you say was the definition of an objective, specific statement that describes the intention of different implementation parts of the project. And lastly, we are saying the greatest challenge arises from failing to see these parts. If you fail to see these parts, then you start having challenges of having a proper and clear objective that we need. Now, this now gives us that we need to set activities. Each specific objective of the project has several potential. and several potential activities, we have to list all these activities by objective. Now, the notes I've given you after that takes you to some of the notes that I want you to understand, the indicators, and uh, some of the things that you might just read to understand. Now, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, that we go directly to our, I demonstrate this, by having work that is going to be one work that is going to understand, make us all understand. Now, I want us to do a sample 
of a goal, objectives, and we set activities. I'm only going to do one objective and have this objective, activities, and I will leave you from there to start, continue with your coursework. Now, in my problem here, I've got one goal. Now, the goal that I've been using all through in this class is which I realize that meets the requirements of the components of a goal and meets the characteristics of a goal. I use the word to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. You can put your campus. In your notes you are writing, you can put your campus to make everything clear with you. So whatever I'm trying to do, also think about your campus, what you see. My, my, my thinking is going to be replaced by either Kampala campus or main campus. My thinking is going to be replaced by either Kampala campus or main campus. Might be Kampala campus because by the time we did this, I was the associate, I was the associate director in Kampala campus by those times. Right now I'm in a different office and we bring this, that if that is our goal, therefore, what can be our objective? We said for us to set a project objective, we must divide the goal into implementation parts. And those implementation parts are part A and part B. The part A of part one says the components of a goal is the part that summarizes what we are going to do. What are we going to do? We are going to prevent. The second part is the part that summarizes the overall impact of the problem, of the project. And what is the overall impact? The spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. So putting this in mind, I can have one way to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Bugema University. And one is, I can talk about two, what can you say? I want to bring something about online studies and it has to be a, a verb a verb again we say that an objective act is about action words objective is about action words now what are we going to do we can talk about to promote to promote online learning. I'm looking at the characteristics after this, we want to look at the, the character of a goal of an objective if they are all put there. To promote online learning at Bugema University by 2022 by May 2022 if I was writing it but now let me say if if it is what I need for the online by October it was by October 2020 you remember COVID-19 hit us in March 2020 and all of us who became university started teaching online by 2020 October when the National Council gave us to go ahead. Now, that is what we wanted to do. Now let's look at this. We are saying that the characteristics of an objective, the characteristics of an objective should be smart. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time-bound. Is it specific? 
we are going to promote. That's our specificness. And what are we going to promote? Is it measurable? Is it measurable? Time bound is there. But is it measurable that you promote online learning at Fugema University? Is it achievable? Yes. Is it realistic? Yes. Is it time bound? Yes. Is it measurable? The fact that it is not measurable makes us think about this part. Because the fact that you're saying promote online learning, how? At the end of the day, when you're promoting online learning, how do I know that the online learning is at Forget My University? It becomes hard. Now, we have to think about the measurability. then somebody can say, promote or dare. Open distance and e-learning. So somebody can say, there are classes face to face and there is also e-learning. So it is measurable. Because all this, we come and say that it is there. But the fact that we're talking about online learning, it was Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube, Google, anybody can do anything. How to register, you don't have. But when I talk about for them, open distance and e-learning, then it means at some point, there's somebody who is helping you. Then you also have to come to class and understand. Now, this gives me that for me to set this objective, then I need what we call activities. I need what we call activities. For me to achieve this objective, then I need to set activities. What are the possible activities that we game around? What are the possible activities to promote for them? I'll give you, number one, we apply, we, we, we not apply, apply came, came later. The first thing for us to be able to be allowed to teach or dev, we, we apply. We, Bugema, apply. Application, proposal to National Council of Higher Education. That is first activity. We wrote the application and we submitted to National Council for Higher Education. Now, after writing this application, they came and assessed, National Council of Higher Education assessed the BU proposal of ODEM, online and distance learning, or pen and distance learning. And now, after doing that, for them to assess us, we also put in place Studios at main campus because they came to the main campus. We put in place studios in main campus whereby in the studio there was a room. In this room there was studio. In, there was a room, and in each room there was a computer, a special computer. And in each computer, the, in each room there was a camera, and in each room there was a microphone. All those we had to put into place. Now. From setting the studios and placing the studios, we also came to teaching the staff and faculty on teaching on how to teach online. This was a very serious thing. It took Bugema University two weeks. That's why if you go to the elements of Bugema, you'll find main trainer is Roni. It is me. Now, this takes us to that. That we had to take lectures in this for one good week. They had to upload their courses. They had to upload their course. Of, they had to upload everything. So that when the National Council of Higher Education were coming, they saw something that was working. Number three, we also had to meet orient the students. We had a series of orientation programs for the students. How to use the LMS. 
And the questions were, how do I log in? The questions were, the frequently asked questions were, how do I log in? How do I get my, course, my notes? How do I submit? How do I see the lecturer teaching? What do I do? So many questions. And this was both the undergraduate and the graduate students. So when we met all this, then in October, in October, we rolled the teaching online. We rolled for them. So you realize these are some of the activities that Mugema did only to teach online. And that is now what I expect you to do. From the problem that you have given me in the other coursework, continue with it. Have its goal, have its objective, and have its activities. Allow me to stop here. Because after activities, I'm going to reorganize some lecture notes so that I can bring for you how to go on after this. Because I wanted you to continue and finalize this. So allow me to stop here for today. If there's any question, I will answer it.